going to call up uh, somebody who you've seen once already. Rosalind Saunders has lived in Denver for over the past 40 years. She earned a bachelor's and master's in business from Regis University and spent almost a decade with Lockheed and Barton. Even though she has an extensive background in business management, her real passion is community volunteering. She serves on numerous nonprofit boards. Again, please welcome to the stage Rosalind Saunders, this year's honorary banquet chair. Thank you, everyone. Wayne wanted me to share with you on my personal journey, and I will tell you a little bit about it. Just recently, I was entering the doors of a charity luncheon, and a gal I don't often see said, oh, Rosalind, hi, hi, you look great. Lost a little dead weight, I guess. So did I, she said. And I turned to my friend Jan and I said, I guess I'll just smile. I wanted to really say, well, I'm not on steroids right now. I didn't wake up puffy today. Actually, I weigh the same that I've weighed the last 12, 13 years, even though I was thinner before then, so maybe you were thinking of me then. Sadly, but it's so true that our acquaintances and most of our casual friends do not really want to hear about our tale of the woes. They get, we get tired of talking about it. They get tired of hearing it. They just want to hear the good news. If we're lucky, and really very lucky, we have seven or eight great friends who really mean I'm there for you. I'll take you to the doctor. I'll stop by the store. I'll pick up your medicine. And if you're really having a lousy day, I'll bring you some coconut cream pie. My story begins in junior high school when I had mononucleosis, the kissing illness. And my mother and the doctor were just adamant about that's what I'd been doing. And I was saying, no, no, I haven't even kissed a boy yet. And I didn't really think that was fair. But that was just the beginning of unfairness for me. I've had a myriad of hospitalizations and illnesses, and in 1976, my husband was killed. 1977, I started, started a career at Lockheed Martin. I rapidly advanced to the administrator of mechanical engineering, received my master's in finance in 1982. My family was doing great. My kids were having a wonderful time in school. I was still having a lot of illnesses, but I was having a lot of successes. In 1985, I was working at Lockheed, and I was really excited that I was getting to go to Cape Canaveral to see the satellite shuttle. I was also chairing the first all-women group at Lockheed. There was going to be 400 women there that were going to be mentoring each other, and the president of the company was going to speak to them. However, one week before that, I fainted at home, was taken to the emergency room, and diagnosed with a brain tumor. My right side was paralyzed, and I was off to 10 hours of surgery. However, my fate was much better than the doctors had expected. I still say, though, Rosalind died, but the surgery was a success. I later discovered that I'd lost over 50% of my memory, and I had suffered cognitive deficits. My life as I knew it disappeared in a flash. I'll say sometimes to some friends and joke with them and say, well, I had so much education that my brain just burst out. But it was a dreadful time. After eight months, I returned to Lockheed, three hours a day, two days a week. My boss would say, you look fine, you look great. My hair had grown back, and I had this magic makeup. So appearance was, everything looks great. Well, that wasn't the way it was. I so wish Wayne would have been there to tell everyone and to tell me, you're not invisible, but your disability is. They still see you as the brilliant woman they mentored. That lasted for about six weeks. 
I had no idea what I was really doing. The budgets, the training, all this. It was like it was new to me and I was in the first grade. But I had two assistants that knew everything about everything. And I was struggling on until one day my right side went numb and my doctors decided, no, no, you can't do that, not at all. So then the next year, the doctors were giving me tests and going on and on trying to figure out why I didn't have any white blood cells. So finally, after four weeks in the hospital and two weeks in the psychiatric ward, they did a bone marrow and said, she's definitively diagnosed with systematic lupus. And I said, I suggested that a year ago. But to them, it was invisible, unless it was in black and white on the tests. Well, life goes on, and yes, while I may look good when people see me, it's because I usually don't go out when I'm sick or when I'm not feeling well. I'm at home resting. It's not difficult to figure out if you're a close friend. I just lost my place. <laughs> it's a little upsetting to go through all this again, but it's here. My children and my grandchildren really do understand me well, especially my grandchildren. My oldest one says, you're perfect. You are lots of fun. And when I do something bad, you never remember it. We love that. <laughs> Dakota says, she's only nine. She says, Ba, it's just the way you are. I love you like that. Of course, she didn't know me before, but she's OK if I forget this or if I forget that. It's all right. Well, so where am I really today? Feeling pretty positive about life. Well, I do rest when I need it. No, and I do know the true meaning of tired. It's not just plopping in a chair, like a lot of people think it is. Tired is not being able to lift my head off the pillow, submitting to drugs that ease my muscle pain, not being able to get out of bed at all, I do try to be understanding of myself and others when I forget things, particularly when I'm trying to go somewhere and I know I've been there several times and I should absolutely know my way, but I get confused and I don't know. And I often say, I'm going to the ladies' room, but if I don't come back, will you come find me, especially if it's a new place, because I get turned around really easy. Well, some people just believe that when I don't want to do something, I just don't want to do it. It's not that I don't feel good. It's just that I don't want to do it, or I'm faking it. We do wish that was true, don't we, Wayne? Could you please send them all your book, Wayne, and also have a group meeting for all the perfect people so they can get a clue? So many have really needed invisible disabilities, and I'm really so happy that it's here for us. It's really a blessing for all of us, for those that have it and for those that don't, for them to know about it. I would really like for you to support tonight extra with our live auction and our special appeal. Just stretching out wherever you can to help make all the dreams that the association has even go further and further. And I would personally appreciate that, too. Thank you so much all for being here.